All right, we're going to go ahead and continue with tonight's media availabilities. Uh, we have now been joined by today's Straight Talk Wireless 400 uh, winner, Tyler Reddick, driver of the number 452311 um, racing Toyota. Um, Tyler, congratulations on making the championship four. Can you kind of walk us through those last few laps and your emotions? <laughs> I can't walk you through the last few laps, but my emotions were all over the place. Um, yeah, when we uh, we went long, I, you know, I, I didn't know how that was going to play out. I, I really thought that uh, I, I was worried that that caution wasn't going to come, and then uh, we pit, we lose the lap, and I'm like, oh, damn. Uh, we get back the lead lap, and I'm just not expecting it, right? And, uh, Nick Nick Payne, my spotter, says caution. It's like, oh boy, great. Now we're at the back, whatever else. And um, Billy was like, yeah, we're going to stay out. And I'm like, oh shit, we're going to stay out. <laughs> All right, we're going to figure this out. And so, yeah, um, uh, turn one went about as good as I thought it could have went. Uh, <laughs> I, saw the, I saw Danny get to my outside, and that wasn't great, but uh, we settled in there, and I didn't know how bad we were going to bleed. And I drove in turn three, kind of, I don't know, out of desperation or something, and I, I kind of held serve. I was very shocked by that. Um, and then as the laps just kept, kept as, as the laps just kept winding down, um, it, it didn't truly feel like we were at a, a big tire deficit. You know, you come to this place and you know that tires are a premium. Early in the race, we saw the eight, a number of other cars on like three, four lap tires, you know, stay out and get their doors blown off. So I was just completely shocked that we were able to stay in the mix like we were. And yeah, going into one, I just, I made the right guess. I got the bottom, I got clean air. I got up, uh, up in front of the 11 and had a good run on the 12. I was just blown away that, uh, I had that kind of momentum going into turn three and, um, you know, I just, I thought there was no way the 12 was going to leave. There's no way that Blaney was going to leave me the route outside, but he must have thought that I was just going to absolutely dive bomb it off in there to try and get around him. And once I saw him kind of shade down, I just I hit the gas and forgot about everything else. And it came out on the other side and in the lead, it was just crazy. We're going to go ahead and open it up to questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we will work on getting a wireless mic to you. We'll go to Bob first. Bob Hawkers, Fox Sports. How do you, I mean, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, but how do you put out of your head what happened last week when you're trying to make a move to then go and make daring moves that you had to do at the end of the race today? You can't think about it at all. Um, you know, I'm thankful that uh, the cars are as safe as they are when it when it comes to rolling them over. You know, they made a big big improvements with that um, from Gen Six to Gen Seven. You know, certainly, I didn't think um, the crash was as big as it was, but it was an interesting process understanding that. But again, I was just glad the car, for the most part, you know, it stayed in the seat. Nothing collapsed. Nothing crazy happened. Uh, but I don't know. To your point, Bob, just, we're, we're kind of crazy to some degree. Um, my, my first lap in the car after flipping it, I drive off into turn three and four in practice right on the wall like nothing had ever happened. That's just, 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 that's just how you have to be. Uh, if you want to compete on this level, you've got to be able to remember the important things, remember the lessons, but you know, there's certain things you just got to completely block out and forget and, and go into the next day, the next week, completely ready to go like nothing ever happened. We'll go to Davey. Davey Siegel with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. What is it about this place that just suits you? It doesn't matter if it's Cup, <laughs> Xfinity, Next Gen, Gen 6. I mean, what is it about this place? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I like Florida. Maybe that's some of it. The weather's always nice. <sighs> yeah, this just this place is the only mile and, we ha mile and a half that we have that is shaped the way that it is. and. Uh, with the nature of the surface, the the banking, the, this how well the wall is shaped, uh, it it really allows you to just get up there and rip it and make a lot of speed. And today was 
a day where you could really run the wall in three and four, but other in one and two, you had to move around quite a bit. And so that, that took some adjusting, but, but our car was really, really tuned for it. I mean, our beast Camry could just kind of run them wherever we wanted it to and wanted to, that was, that was nice. And it really was a big part of why we were able to, to win this race today. We could, on our older tires, we hooked a white line and got up in line and, um, just versatility is important here, but I don't know. This place has just been really, really fun from the first time I ever ran it as a, as a rookie in the truck series. I don't know what it is. Just me as a dirt racer, I love stepping over the edge and this place seems to reward that to some degree. You have to take care of your tires, but being able to rip the fence when all else fails, man, it's just, um, there's, there's nowhere else like this place where you can do that and make that kind of speed and just a lot of fun to, to run lap after lap. Did your mindset change at all watching truck and Xfinity yesterday and seeing how important and how advantageous it was to wrap the bottom on the white line for Austin and Xfinity specifically? I mean, to your point, having a versatile car is important, but we hear so much about ripping the fence and running the top and the momentum you get up there. Did your mindset going into today change at all based on what you experienced in practice yesterday and what you saw on the other two? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you always have to be ready to, to adapt. And so for us, we, we, you know, we, we had a, an approach and we kind of stuck to it on practice day, watching the Xfinity race play out like it did was a bit interesting, but certainly um, it's funny. You would think as a track ages, you know, you'll want to run the higher lanes more and more, but something about this place where maybe just the amount of laps that have been ran around the top, the, the bottom can be more beneficial at times. So just when you think you have a track like this figured out, it just always seems to present something new that uh, kind of takes you out, takes you, catch you off guard and you have to adapt. And so that was just the name of the game for us all day long. We kind of just keep having, kept having to adjust to what, what our car would give us. And um, ultimately at the end, you know, we kind of went on a limb with our strategy, but cannot believe it, but it paid off. It was, it was an incredible thing. I cannot believe we won the race on older tires at a place like Homestead. It's just, it just shouldn't happen, but we did it. But, but that's the kind of team that we have. Um, we've been put in some very tough situations. We found ways to overcome it. Um, and we did that again today. We're going to go to Jordan, Jared, and then in the middle here, Reed, and then Reed after. Or Bianchi the Athletic, you kind of answered my question a little bit, but how does it, on this track where tires are everything, how does a driver with two laps older tires, not just pass the two cars in front of him, but you ripped off this incredible lap? Yeah, I heard about that after the fact, that it was a really fast lap. I, I truly don't know. Um, when you think about it, I had clean air for the whole lap. You know, I went down to the bottom. The 12 was kind of more worried about the 11, as he should have been. Um, and the three and four, I, I got the top uncontested. So, yeah, I guess I had clean air. It should have been a pretty quick lap. But um, I don't know. You, you Sometimes you have to take guesses going into the corner where where you think the lane for you is going to be. And I just, I just got it right. Um, it's crazy to do it the way we did, but we did it. Your dad say anything to you in victory lane? Did your dad say anything to you in victory oh, lane? Oh gosh, I mean, he's just really proud of me. Um, we were both just in disbelief by what just happened, honestly. Yeah, at a place like this, that shouldn't work, but we made it work, it's just incredible. Um, he was proud, everyone's really, really excited and ecstatic about what just took place. I just, again, still in disbelief, <laughs> honestly. We're gonna go to Jared. Jared Haas with FrenchStretch.com. Reddick, you had issues with traction and pit stops were not up to speed. Do you feel confident that going into Phoenix that the pit crew stuff will be cleaned up because of how tight the competition is with pit crews? Yeah, we, we got we got, we got got extra time to just think about Phoenix now. Um, that, that's going to be good for us. So I, I have faith in my team. You know, they've, they know how to execute a fast stop. And for them, they, they can just solely focus on Phoenix. Um, for the next next week and a half, if you will, uh, before we get there. Undefeated so far um, in this playoff structure, you went two for two. Do you feel the reign of Reddick coming back for 28, uh, when you won your championships back in 2018 and 2019, or is this a completely different Tyler Reddick? Hmm. Yeah, that Tyler wasn't very good at Phoenix, um, but I feel like 
since since I came over twenty three eleven and, and working with you know becoming a driver in, in a Toyota Camry, I've I've certainly gotten a bit better at, at Phoenix. So um, look back to the spring and we were really really solid. Obviously Christopher found something in that race that set him apart from the rest of the field, but um, it's something that we've been thinking about since since that first race. How can we go back there and um, compete with with Christopher? And so it's been on our mind. We've been thinking about it. We've obviously we've had a lot of season between now and then, uh, but the work that we put in uh, after Phoenix should certainly help us as we prepare for this race coming up. We're going to come up to the front to read, and then we're going to come on the middle, and then to Daniel. Uh, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire. Blaney said afterwards that um, his he thought he drove it pretty hard into three, and his plan was to slide up, but by that time you were already outside him. Um, were you confident at that point from what you felt after the restart that the car was going to stick? I had no idea, but I was willing to take the risk and find out. So that's just that's just the corner I was in. I knew that uh, for us to make it to Phoenix, that a win here today was going to really help our odds. So yeah, I just I don't know. I drove it in until I got next to him and then hoped that it stuck, and it and it did. It was pretty incredible. We're going to go to Tim in the middle. Hi, Tyler. Tim Reynolds with the Associated Press. Um, those of us that have followed Michael forever and ever and ever know there's only one thing that makes him that happy, and that's winning. Um, can you just take us through what that moment is like and what, what it's... I, I know there's a lot that leads to the win and Phoenix and all that, of course, are very good things, but when you can make the boss that happy, that's pretty rare. Yeah, um, it's, What was it's, that moment like? It, it's special, man. Um, you know, he he's dedicated a lot of, of his time, his, his efforts, his money, into bring and to elevating 2311 to where it is right now, and um, you know he's fully committed to to this team, to this to this to our organization, and um, to be able to reward him with the days like we had today is um, is, is a true honor. So it was really cool to see how happy he was. Um, we're all very happy about it, and um, you know he he believed in me. He believes in this team, the people that that him, Denny, and everybody else is, is put together to, to create what 2311 is um, you know he he's put a lot towards it and it's it's really cool in these in these critical moments to be able to uh, deliver um, for, for him and for everybody else that's a part of the team we'll go to Daniel Daniel that in friendsrich.com so after MJ was finished giving you a bear hug and lifting you up completely off the ground <laughs> what, what, what did he say to you Oh man, he was just really proud. Um, the fight that we had, you know, never giving up, just fighting through the adversity, you know. Um, just really, really proud of, of the effort we put forth. Um, he, uh, he, he, like I said, he believes in, in, in me. He believes in this team. Um, I know the circumstances weren't weren't ideal, but this is uh, the kind of things that um, it, we have to overcome when it when when we get put in these positions. We've had to do it a few times and. Uh, he was uh, really proud of, of the whole team for, for the effort that we, we put forth. And this is probably a silly question, but do you consider this the biggest, most important win of your racing career so far? This was pretty big, yeah. To do it that way um, at a place like this when everything was on the line like it was is uh, pretty incredible. But uh, we got to enjoy it. We're going to certainly enjoy it and celebrate it. Um, but Monday morning on, we're going to be thinking about Phoenix and, and getting ready for what lies ahead. Any additional questions for Tyler? We'll come back up to Bob and then Lee. Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. From what you're saying, you haven't seen the finish. Is that right? You haven't seen a replay? Like bits and pieces, but not the full thing, no. So like, so I know you say you're kind of in disbelief. So do you have any like, kind of sense of like, I mean, some people call this one of the best finishes to one of the best races of the playoff era like do you have any sense of of that no, or not exactly that or like <laughs> um no I'm, I'm sure when when the time is right i'll have the opportunity to go back and look at it but living it it just seemed like um yeah just it wasn't a great restart but i just could not believe that uh we were holding on as good as we were and you know, my, my opportunity was the 12 and 11 being worried about each other and try to get in the middle of it and then make something out of it. So 
yeah, I was very fortunate that I was left atop at my my favorite track and my favorite corner, uh, which is three and four here. So I just took a risk and it and it paid off. I I don't know what else really to say. We're gonna come up to the front with Lee. Lee Spencer, Sirius X and NASCAR Radio and CashFence.com. I'm kind of curious, um, what was going on getting out of the pit box? Because were you not getting a good launch? There were a couple of times that it seemed like you were telling the guys you were struggling getting out. It, it, um, I don't know, I guess Bell had that issue with Las Vegas in the number one pit box, but you didn't have trouble with that. And I wanted to know from a characteristic standpoint what was going on. Yeah, you know, we, we definitely struggled with it at Vegas a week ago too, but um, we're just trying to, at bare minimum, just take the take the gain that it, that, that stall one gives us and live with it, uh, make the most of it. But yeah, it seemed like more times than not, it just was like, man, if we could just get a little more traction out of this uh, first stall, we would, um, we'd be passing cars on pit road instead of maintaining or losing one or two. But yeah, it's just the struggle that that you have at some of these tracks. You know, that, that first pit stall does have an advantage, but, but when you leave that pit stall, you're on asphalt or a different surface that's slick. And certainly I had my struggles with it today and last week. Any additional questions? Go ahead. So wh why is turn three and four your favorite corner <laughs> in, yeah. in, in, in um, racing? I don't know, it just feels like you can drive a lot deeper in there than you should. And uh, it worked. I don't know, I've always felt that way about that corner. Just um, it feels like you can, when the moment's right, you can do some pretty crazy stuff over there. And thankfully I did, and it paid off. Finally, Tyler, I have one more for you. Um, how does it feel to make the biggest and most important pass to win the race? And that ended up setting the record for the lead changes at Homestead. Um, and then you ended up punching your ticket to the champ four. I mean, uh, I, I knew we needed to come in here and win, but I, I didn't ever foresee it being as crazy as it was um, today as it ended up playing out. But yeah, we uh, put in a tough spot and we had to rise the occasion and we did as a team and just, it takes everybody. And we did a really good job of uh, overcoming the things that went our way, that didn't work out um, and just being gutsy and, and willing to put it all on the line like we did. Awesome, thank you so much for joining us and congratulations. Thank you.